I don't remember ever working with Alan Parsons before. I, I knew him because he was an EMI um, engineer at, at uh, Abbey Road. So I suppose if I was there, I noticed him, especially because he's very tall and I'm very short. So, hello, Alan. And um, apparently he has said that he heard my voice on one of those cover versions. Do you know... Do you, do you remember they used to buy them for 10 shillings at Woolworths, Top of the Pops, they were called? And um, he apparently had heard something I'd done. So um, I knew nothing about this. Uh, I just had a call from this guy that worked at Abbey Road called Dennis, who said, rang me up and said, was I free to do a session? And I was getting to be quite busy at the time, and I couldn't do what they wanted, I couldn't do the times, and no name was mentioned, I didn't, had no idea um, who it was for, I didn't even ask, and he said, oh, well, they're very keen to, you know, you to do something, and I said, well, the only time I can do it is the next Sunday um, in the evening, and so he said, oh, I'll call you back, so he called me back, and I said, oh, what, what, who is it? And he said, Pink Floyd. I have to be honest, um, wasn't a mad, keen fan. So I went up to Abbey Road. I had no idea what it was. Nobody told me. I didn't know whether I was going to walk into the studio. There was going to be a choir, two other girls, three other girls. No idea. So I walked in with my then boyfriend and um, went into the control room. And... Um, the band were there and they proceeded to explain to me that they were doing this album, it was nearly finished and that the concept of the album birth and death and everything else in between and um, they played me the backing track and I said well what do you want? Basically they had no idea so I thought oh fine when I look back, I was fairly new to this sort of world, you know, and um, probably quite naive. But anyway, I uh, listened to the track a couple of times, and I, I personally had no idea what to do and, or what they wanted. I said, I think the best thing is, for me is to go into the studio, put the cans on, and have a little go, and, and see what happens. So I started off by going, oh, baby, baby, yeah, yeah, baby, baby, which is what one tended to, to do, for sort of scat, sort of singing. And they said, oh, no, 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 we don't want any words. Well, that really stumped me. So um, David Gilmore came. He, I have to say that he was really the, the one that directed me. Um, there wasn't a word from anybody else, as far as I can remember. And so David said, would, I, w would you like me to write out the chord sequence? And I said, no, 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 no. And <clears throat> it sort of happened when I, I thought, well, I really don't know what they want. I don't know, but uh, okay, best feet forward, you know. Um, and I thought, well, and I've said this many times, but it's absolutely true, that I thought, I have to pretend to be an instrument, and that gave me uh, an avenue to explore. And um, so I started doing something. He said, we like that. So I said to Alan, OK, put the red light on, record this, because usually the first take is the best, because it's very spon spontaneous, and boom. And the more you do that sort of thing, it becomes repetitive, and it's not so spontaneous it becomes sound contrived you say. so uh, put the red light on and I started singing and did it but exhausting I think it was and the funny thing was and I, I may have made this up but David Gilmore said would I like a drink would you like a can of beer and I said well that would be nice yes and it was a can of Heineken refreshes the parts you see that other yes so I think it was all down to Heineken myself so I get a free case. And um, so then they said, well, I think we, we'll do another take. And so I did another one. And then David said, I think you could improve upon that. And 
I didn't think I could. And so I started a third track, and in the middle I stopped and I said, look, I really think that you've got enough, because it felt, it felt fairly complete, you know. So um, I went into the control room and they played it, and Alan sort of, used, but, you know, put a bit of this, and um, not a lot was said. And I said, oh, well, well, thank you very much, um, goodbye and left. And I was convinced it would never see the light of day because they hadn't commented, they hadn't made any, do you know what I mean? They hadn't said great, awful, nothing. I honestly thought they didn't like it. And uh, I didn't give it much thought because I never thought it, anybody would hear it. I, yeah. uh, I did feel at the time it was probably an experiment you know, that they weren't quite sure. They might very well put a saxophone on it or, I don't know, string quartet. For And the only, as I say, I didn't give it much thought until in about March I was going uh, back to my flat. Which I had no idea that when the album was coming out. Um, and I was on my way home to my flat and... There used to be a record shop in King's Road, just past the Chelsea Potter, which was near where I lived. And there in the f window was this now familiar um, cover and Pink Floyd new album. And so I thought, oh, I wonder if that's what I did. See? I had no idea. And so I walked in and opened the album and there was great... I, didn't, I don't think I even knew what... I don't think it had a title when I did the singing. It was just called Scat, I think, or something. Um, and there it was, Great Gig in the Sky, um, vocal Claire Torrey. So I thought, oh, I'll have to buy that. <laughs> so uh, I did, and I put some headphones on and listened to the album from beginning to end. And it was, I mean, I'm sure you've listened to it on, I know you've yeah, but it's really good. And, and I thought, well, thank you very much. And then that was it, on to the next job. Never gave it much thought. And not a lot of people, uh, all I know is that uh, uh, several months later I was doing something at Abbey Road and Alan was there and he said, oh, the album's doing really well. So I said, what album? He said, you know, Dark Side of the Moon. So I said, oh, is it? He said, yes, it's really doing well in America. So I said, oh, fine, jolly good. And that was it, really. How come, how did it happen, you know? And who knows? I've often wondered, because it's not given me some grief over the years, what, you know, various things. I often wonder if it was the devil grinning up at me, or God smiling down on me. And I still haven't figured out which one had the final say. But um, it was one of those things happened. It was just, I think Roger once said it was a happy accident, what happened in the studio that day, evening. That's it strange.